right, folks, you might be expecting a vlog, but we are going to take just a day or two more to wrap up our final thoughts and share some images and videos from this amazing trip. But what I want to do right now is take just a few moments and show you how easy it is to make a spectacular panorama. I've got these series of images that I shot, and you're looking at the uh, result now. Let, let me just show you how gigantic this uh, file is. I just zoomed into it, and now we're looking at the uh, stitched images all together, done in Photoshop uh, from Lightroom. Really, really easy to do. So let's take a look at how you do this. So I have an end result here, but before I had that, I had a series of images I shot. Now, I shot these with the 70 to 200 at 200. A lot of times when you walk up to a scene and you think about making a panorama, you often think about shooting very wide. Uh, and that gives you a lot of information, um, or I should say it gives you a very wide perspective, but it doesn't give you a lot of detail and information because you're starting off far away from everything. If you use a longer lens and capture more frames, you can get some amazing detailed shots. So you can see here, here, here's just one of these shots. Now, if you're looking down here, you see that there is some overlap. Let's make these uh, thumbnails a little bit bigger here for a second so we can get a kind of idea. So you can see right here, there's the little ridge, and then I just made sure that I took the next shot where it showed the little ridge. Now, you can do this very carefully with a tripod, panning head, that is going to give you the best results, but 95% of the panoramas I shoot, I just eyeball it and um, just make sure I am looking through the viewfinder or on the back of the camera and giving myself a good amount of overlap. So you can see that we're starting to get into this little bit of a green rise right here on this, and the next shot right there has that bit of green rise. Sharp peak in the far right, is now over here on the left here. So I'm going to select these images in Lightroom, doesn't matter what module you're in, and I'm gonna uh, control click or right click and choose edit in, and if you have Photoshop, and this is one of those places where it's really nice to have that $9.99 a month deal, there's a link to get into that right down below if you're interested, um, because for both panoramas, HDRs, um, and doing some animated GIFs and things of that sort, and there's other reasons why you might want to open layers. All of this is just built right in when you have these two programs in, com in uh, conjunction. I'm going to choose Merge to Panorama in Photoshop, and if I come down here so I can see my dock, Photoshop is, uh, well actually it was already open, Photo Merge. Blend images together. I'm going to go ahead and vignette removal. The 70 to 200, really at 200, you're not going to have any vignette, but um, I'm just going to have that checked. And geometric distortion correction as well. Layout, I leave on auto 95% of the time and really don't mess with any of these others. Um, and it's got the files here. I'll come in from Lightroom. I'm going to hit OK. And then depending on how fast your computer is, you might be waiting for a little while. And depending on how many shots and the size of those shots. But what it's going to do is it's going to open each of them. It's going to look for ways to match these up. And it's going to stitch them all together. All right, and you can see our resulting panorama. Now, one downside to shooting it freehand is that you can see that it's not lined up perfectly. I um, shot a little bit higher the further to the right I went, and as a result, I've lost some information or don't have any over there. Well, we can fix that in just a second. Uh, at, up at the top, the bottom is a little bit trickier, so we're just going to crop that out. Let me show you the dimensions of this right now, though. It's 99 inches by 14 inches at 300 ppi. It means I could make a print that was over 100 inches long and uh, 14 over a foot tall. That is an immense amount of data. And you can see if we zoom in here that there is lots of data in this file. There's a lot, or a lot of detail. It's great. Now, one thing I want to say, back up real quick and talk about um, I don't want to go into a whole lot of depth about taking panoramas, but you should be in manual mode so that your exposure changes, does not change over the course of the pano as you're shooting. Uh, if you let the camera be in auto mode, it may adjust different settings depending on how close or how far from the sun you are, and that is going to be a much harder image to set up. So you should find uh, a good average metering for the scene and then shoot that all the way across the scene.
Now, first thing I'm going to actually do here is um, I'm not going to work with this uh, these layers anymore, and they take up a lot of room in the computer's memory. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those layers so they're all one now. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and resize this just a little bit um, and bring it down so 29,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels high. Let's and for the purposes of of working with this, let's just bring it down to an even 20,000 pixels. And it is now a 345 megabyte file versus 763. Uh, and I'm going to say OK. All right, now it's a little bit more manageable, a little bit easier to work with. Now we can fix this empty area here if we want that much sky up there. Let me just show you one of the other cool features of Photoshop. I'm going to come in over here and highlight or select all of that area that is missing bits of content. And I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and I'm on Content Aware Fill. This is a newish feature. It's been in the last couple of versions of Photoshop that will take a look at the surrounding information and say, well, here's what it should look like. And with something as easy as Sky, it does a good job almost all of the time. With trickier content like our foreground, we're going to have to um, crop. You could possibly get some good results out of playing with that but um, it's just going to be easier to crop into that information. And it's done. And you can see that it has done a pretty good job. In fact, it's done an excellent job of adding in some blue sky. So that's good. Let's zoom back out. Now I'm going to get my crop tool um, and just drag up to the bottom of that information there or that bit. And it looks like we have a tiny bit over here on the left to cut off, so I'm going to drag in on the left-hand side and hit Enter. And then here is our panorama of um, some mountain scene here in Montana. And now I'm just going to exit and say Save. And it's going to be smart enough to know that I took these from Lightroom, uh, opened from within Lightroom using that uh, context aware or context menu. So now when I close it and I come back here, you can see that I have my panorama. Now you can see this one looks a good bit sharper and a little bit of a bluer sky. I've done some tweaking to it. It, it comes back in as a TIFF file. It's very large, um, and, but you can work with this file. So I can come in here and increase my contrast a little bit. Let's go to fill for a minute because this is what I think is amazing. I was showing you at the beginning. You can then navigate through this file, taking a look and just the amount of information here is pretty spectacular. Oh, it looks like there's a little bit over on that side as well that is missing. So let's go back to fit and we can crop here as well. So I'm going to hit the crop tool and I'm just going to drag in just a tiny bit from that side. So now we have everything. So I increase my exposure a little bit. I'm going to um, decrease the highlights and increase the shadows a tiny bit, add a little bit of clarity and maybe a little bit yellower because it's a little bit more true to the light that was hitting these mountains. Maybe not quite that much, somewhere in there. And you could also drag down a gradient. There's a lot more things you could do. I've talked about those in my Scenic Lightroom Tips and Tricks video. There's a link to that right down below as well. If you felt like there was some distortion in this because of the way that you um, shot it, you can come down here to Manual Lens Correction and you can change and uh, adjust the um, look of this by just dragging these sliders as you can with many of the settings. I'm going to come back up and add a little bit of sharpening. Always good. 1.2 here and then let's just come up to maybe 35 there. And now we have a spectacular panorama and I had to do very little work quick review, selected the images, he said edit in Lightroom, and you can do as many as you want. Uh, your file will get very large. I said merge the panorama, and then Photoshop took care of 90% of the work. I did a little bit more tweaking, and I have a nice panorama that I can print out and uh, display someplace in my house, or put online for people to look at and goggle. As I said, we'll be back soon with our wrap-up thoughts of this amazing trip. All I can say is Yellowstone is amazing. Yellowstone in winter is epically amazing. 
We'll be back soon. If you've got any questions, leave comments down below. If this was helpful, hit the thumbs up. And if you've ever shot a big panorama, put a link to it down below if you can, or come over onto my Facebook page and share it. I'd love to see it. Thanks so much for listening, watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.